We'll bring you the results later on in the show. A man true to his word, he said he would give us his first interview once this leadership issue in the House was all settled. Joining us now is Majority Leader Sandy Hoyer. Congressman, good to have you with us today. Hi, Ed. You are all going to be the Democratic whip with the new Congress getting into session. Uh, a lot of people want to know about your relationship with Jim Clyburn and the rub that took place, if there was any, because there are those over on the right that were trying to make this an issue of race. How are you working together? Well, it wasn't an issue of race at all. It was an issue. We lost the majority, and therefore we had one less leadership spot. And uh, Mr. Clyburn and I had discussions about it. We had, uh, uh, we're good friends. We've been friends for 45 years. We're still very good friends, and uh, we're going to work together. It was obvious that uh, we had to uh, do something other than simply run against one another, and that happened, and I'm pleased about it. And uh, I look forward to working with Jim Clyburn, who's a very effective uh, leader of our caucus are very well respected within our caucus. Congressman, the night of the election, President Obama reached out to the Republicans and said, let's get together. And then 48 hours out from that meeting, which was scheduled for tomorrow night, November 18th, they say, no, we got caucus issues, we can't make it. Are they disrespecting the president? You know, I can't remember a time, and you just referenced it earlier, when President Bush invited me and, and Democratic leaders to come down to the White House uh, for a meeting that we didn't, uh, uh, even if it was a 24-hour notice, uh, redo our schedules to make sure that we could make it. Uh, I think it was unfortunate. The American public have sent a pretty clear message, I think, that they want us to work together. They're not too happy with either one of us. Uh, obviously, we lost uh, control of the House, uh, but the message we should be getting from uh, the American people is, look, you guys need to find common yeah. ground to solve our problems and stop playing politics. So it goes from uh, November 18th to November 30th. Is that critical time, in your opinion? Well, it certainly is time that we could use for planning on what we're going to do during the week of November 29th uh, in terms of some very important uh, issues, uh, taxes being uh, one of them, certainly, is that you've just referenced. Uh, but the fact of the matter is uh, I think it sends a message very early on that we're not going to be responsive uh, to the president's uh, so, uh, request to come down. Are they disrespecting the president? About, well, I think it is a disrespectful act uh, on the behalf of, uh, of the Republican leadership. Uh, uh, certainly, it's, it's hard to believe the organizing caucuses are now out of the way. It's hard to believe that uh, two weeks out that they couldn't make uh, uh, themselves available uh, tomorrow uh, to meet with the president of the United States. Congressman, what about all this talk about compromise? Where are are the Democrats and how far are you willing to go in the House, you and Nancy Pelosi, when it comes, Speaker Pelosi, when it comes to tax cuts and this policy that's in place right now, this legislation could sunset. Why not go down that road? How do you feel about it? Well, we feel very strongly, Ed, that uh, <clears throat> the only tax uh, taxes we want to keep from increasing are the tax uh, taxes on those 250,000 and under middle class families. Yeah. Uh, we want to make sure in this economy that is growing jobs now, as you pointed out, but still not moving at the pace we want it to uh, move to create the kinds of jobs we need to replace the 8 million that were lost under the Bush administration. Uh, we feel that that keeping those tax uh, decreases in place is an important thing to do. And where's the uh, we line don't for the wealthy? How, yeah, we don't believe, however, that we ought to add $700 billion yeah. to the deficit, okay. have our grandchildren paying for those of us uh, who are well off. Uh, that's not a penalty on those of us who are uh, better off. It is a, a, a statement that Americans also wanted fiscal responsibility and fiscal balance. Yeah. Uh, and we need to get so there. So where is the line drawn for the wealthy? Is it 500 grand, a million dollars? Is there uh, any line that's going to be drawn? Well, we have, we have drawn it at 250000 okay. and uh, I've talked to uh, uh, Chairman Levin of the committee. Uh, and uh, is there room uh, to talk about perhaps a different level? Uh, there is obviously talk about different levels in the Senate uh, and, uh, frankly, the White House as well. But we're very focused on the 250000 figure we've been using. But as it stands tonight, the Democratic position is no doubt you will get something extended for the middle class and those yes, below 250,000. Okay. That the, is our that is our effort. Okay. The another, That's our objective. All right. Thank you on that, Congressman. Now, the next issue is Daryl Issa is talking about more power for inspectors, subpoenas, investigating the Obama administration. He's been on record saying that this is the most correct president, corrupt president, and then he backed off. 
What do you think his mission is? And how, how concerned are you about Daryl Issa and Government Oversight, Government Reform Committee? Well, first, let's say government oversight uh, is absolutely necessary. We need to affect oversight of the executive department. That's one of the purposes of the Congress of the United States. That's one of our legitimate objectives. However, misusing that objective to harass uh, and uh, politically attack uh, an opponent uh, is a wrong use, a misuse uh, of that authority. And I would hope that Mr. Issa uh, uses the authority in a, an appropriate way. Uh, very frankly, we saw during the course of the Clinton administration, I think, an abuse of investigative power. You think he's on the road to abuse? I think that uh, certainly if he believes this president's the most corrupt president in history, now he's backed off from that. But I thought that was an absurd statement when he made it. I think it's an absurd conclusion. Uh, clearly nowhere close to the truth. In fact, this president has adopted a number of reforms to make government more transparent yeah. uh, and more honest and higher integrity. Uh, but the fact is uh, we, we need to watch what uh, Mr. Ice is going to do. Uh, Mr. Ice is the chairman of the committee. You bet. Hopefully, hopefully, uh, I think the American people will want to see him proceed in a judicious manner, in a fair manner. Yes, we have to make sure the executive department is acting uh, honestly and consistent with policies that the Congress has adopted. But what we don't need is to have uh, 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 kangaroo court uh, types of proceedings okay. uh, putting the administration just through the griddle for political purposes. Congressman Stanley Hoyer, always a pleasure. Thanks for being with us tonight. Thank you, Ed. Appreciate it. Joining us now is Progr